Hi, everybody. My name is Paul. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how self-service is not the goal. So self-service platforms, all those things, self-service is not the goal. What do I mean by that? Well, first off, let's define self-service for a second uh, in technology space and software delivery. So here's, here's just a quick definition that I'm just pulling out of my head so you know what's inside my head a little bit. So self-service is predefined, or I would say paved, other people say paved ways to ensure the safety and low risk for dev teams to ship quickly on their own. So some examples of that, um, I'm a big performance and reliability geek. So, you know, for me, it's, it's a self-service performance platform or something like that. Makes it easy for devs to kind of run quick performance checks. Uh, same thing with security, right? Security and performance and those kind of things, guardrails that are layered into, let's say, pipelines. Um, that could include also things like setup and configuration, uh, guides, documents, for specific technology stacks. Um, you might also think about things like predefined or pre-built images, containers or AMIs, or whatever they are, um, and cloud templates, right? So these are the types of things most people think about when they're like self-service, I gotta build this stuff for other people. Okay, but I said self-service is not the goal. Why am I saying it's not the goal? Well, think about your car, right? Your car is not a goal. <laughs> it's a vehicle to either get you from one place to the other or to help transport certain things, right? The car, as cool as that might be, is not the goal. It takes some investment, it takes some maintenance, but it's not itself the goal. Um, I also know uh, having to go to a lot of little kids' birthday parties, right? Uh, pinatas, right? The pinata itself, you know, when they whack it and they get candy, the pinata is not the goal. The goal is to have fun, right? Not to hit the pinata, right? That's not the goal. It just happens to be an approach to getting to that goal. And there can be ways that that can go incredibly wrong. You don't want kids going home with black eyes because they got hit by another kid because, you know, the situation wasn't well thought through. Um, just an example from my life. So, how about this? What is the business goal, right? What is the business goal? The business goal is to make money. And usually, whether it's money or time or energy, even nonprofit, to do that reliably and repeatedly. How about the IT goal? What's the IT goal? Well, it's to support the business goals and to do that in a sustainable way, maybe where you're not burning people out all the time, where you're not overrunning systems, that there's not security leaks and stuff like that, right? To do it sustainably. But why is self-service actually very important, right? It's not the goal, but, but it's definitely a, a critical building block, a piece of something else. Well, first off, uh, self-service is so important, security, performance, whatever it is, um, because otherwise, what else, right? Dependencies on other people, on other resources, on other teams, on other silos is slow. Uh, humans, right? If those, if those silos are human beings pressing buttons and doing things, hopefully not in production directly and stuff like that, right? Humans are faulty. Things change over time. Um, also, there's a huge amount of these days the variability, kind of like how Eliyahu Goldrat talks about in the goal, the variability of a system, you know, things change um, and fluctuations and you don't know, the variability of demand for the need for these kind of self-service things. And also, by the way, the supply, right? It's not always instant, right? So self-service starts to get us closer to cl closing the gap between the variable demand for something and the supply of it. Um, a lot of the industry, and I'm not just talking about unicorns and stuff, we're all moving towards a more continuous model for software delivery. That doesn't mean like continuous deployment or continuous delivery necessarily, but cutting things into smaller, more frequent batches so that it's easier to deal with the complexity, move on, parallelize work, those kind of things, that more continuous 
future, <laughs> speaking of futures, um, it's not just the unicorns. I mean, like Netflix is really well known for saying like, we're moving towards more of a, you know, a, a context as opposed to command and control and so on and so forth, right? It's not just them, right? It's, it's all of us, it's banking, healthcare, uh, and, and all sorts of other industries. And keep in mind, it is, an, it is very important to provide some kind of self-service, like do it yourself, here's the pattern, because growing the skills as well as the interest in non-subject matter experts, right, that, that are over there doing their thing, right, if they're just doing that thing, it never grows the appetite in the organization to have those things in place uh, in, in, in teams that aren't like super experts at those things. One danger I wanna call out, right? There is a danger in self-service, right? Improperly designed self-service leads to all sorts of problems, um, both false negatives and false positives in terms of think about the pipeline, right? All of a sudden, you know, they just given something, they don't know how it works and boom, now all of a sudden they get these false negatives or positives out of, they don't know what to do with it, right? Uh, improper design of that thing and design not just of the technology, but of the process and of the people. Those three things are very important. Um, patterns, right? If you unbridled, un, uh, irresponsible sort of self-service ends up with patterns and tons of patterns, fragmentation, pattern fragmentation uh, across the organization. Uh, costs can run out of control. You don't know what you're asking for and it spins up X amount of services. This isn't just performance and security. It could be just be infrastructure as a service, right? Well, now all of a sudden they don't really know. And now what do you have the right or not right limits in place? How are you gonna control that? Um, dangers of unbridled self-service also include, you know, low or no adoption. We set this up, we did all this work People don't really take on just because, or maybe somebody tried it and now all of a sudden it doesn't work for them. So they give up and then they go back to the old ways, right? That low and no adoption is actually a danger of doing this thing wrong. Um, people tend to regress to the mean, you know, the classic thing of like, hey, you know, negative reinforcement and positive reinforcement. You know, only when people are doing things wrong, they get negative, they come back to the mean. Well, when they are doing positive stuff and they get positive reinforcement doesn't always mean that they're going to do it right the next time and the next time and they regress to the mean too. So we really need to think about the danger of unbridled self-service lets people regress back to the things they know, the things that didn't work in the past. Um, and obviously one of those things is people will work around whatever they don't understand, they haven't been encouraged to use and coached properly on, uh, and they'll gamify their way out of actually doing the thing you want it to do. So what then, right? What, what, what else? <clears throat> well, uh, in order to actually avoid these dangers and put self-service in place, what I've seen is a couple of patterns. One is you have to provide some sustained support, right? And continuous learning about what it means to support those self-service systems. You also need alignment, right? From top down, bottom up, because budget, because this stuff is gonna cost some money, uh, whether it's your infrastructure, somebody else's, whatever, right? We need to have alignment if for no other reason, but the fact that this is gonna cost organizations some kind of money or time effort or whatever. Uh, adaptation of the thing as it's going along reduces that notion of fragmentation, right? All these different, snowflake versions of this of these core concepts if you're not adapting those and changing them and defragmenting them over time it's going to lead to, to snowflakes so adaptation and defragmentation of the patterns of how that's used is important um, i would even say that just like any big list of things it needs to be managed like a portfolio right different product teams have different pipelines different needs for different things those things have to be managed uh, in some way rather than it's just being popcorn snowflake and the left hand and the right hand don't ever really know what they're each other are doing um and i would say same thing i've said before like ruthless investment in the other person well in this way uh specifically self-service systems if there's not a return on investment right then people aren't going to do this right they're, they're, they're going to try it and it's going to either be cumbersome and they're going to be forced and now that's not a good culture or they're just going to see the benefit and go back to the old stuff, right? So 
ruthlessly thinking about return on investment for those people and really asking what is what is value what is in like useful output to them is very important a couple of examples of these things sustained support um you got to think about these self-service systems like they are products, just like people will say APIs should be thought of like as products. Well, your patterns and practices throughout the organization, like an SRE's uh, group, the, they, they produce patterns. These things should be thought of as products. And just like products, there should be owners. There should be a responsible party making sure that that thing is continuing to work, work even better over time. Um, schedule some time for adaptation work. I see a lot of teams that are doing the self-service thing. They actually have to budget in some time like PI planning processes to actually do, go through this work. Sometimes you wanna maintain a dashboard just like any product team maintains, you know, maybe a Kanban or a Jira, whatever, right? Like the point is there are fixes and adjustments that you don't wanna lose the detail on. So you need to put that and figure out the flow of work for these self-service adjustments, improvements. Um, you gotta know who your users are. Right? It's not just enough to say, here's the pattern on a wiki, go for it. Like you really, really need to know who are your early adopters, who are the ones who've tried it and had some problems. They might not always reach back out to you. Right? So you really need to be proactive about this and know who those, those consumers of these self-service systems are. You got to plan for who's next. Right, Just because you had a couple of successes with some really fast forward teams, doesn't mean that the rest of the organization is fully prepared to take advantage of the value that you brought with this work to get a self-service system for something up, right? So you need to actually take responsibility for like, okay, we did this thing for these people. What's the next tier of people we need to help and adopt and support? Of course, budget, right? This example of this kind of stuff is like, where's the infrastructure gonna come from? Right, well, where's the subscription cost gonna go? And my concern, the way that most people have done this is, you know, this team manages the budget for these tools and it's not my responsibility. And sometimes that works, right? Every organization's different cost centers and whatnot, right? But ultimately if the product owner who needs something, a critical part of the requirements or features or functionality to be verified, validated, like it should be an easy process to set up infrastructure, if they don't understand the cost of that thing, they're gonna go wild or they're not gonna use it at all, right? So as soon as somebody else is responsible for the budget, now they have to think about it really, really hard. So with that in mind, um, you gotta also make these self-service systems easier than what is in place now, right? Um, you might actually also want to encourage the that ruthless investment of return on you know return on investment um, with uh, a way to link people's ask for a thing right people might ask for a self service way to do this to the requirements that maybe they haven't even thought this is what's driving that ask and worse if they have no requirements for this kind of thing why are they even asking for it right. So with that in mind, I think linking the ask of a, from a team, from a consumer to make this a little easier or do this other thing, give me a self-service platform to do X can be very uh, mired in unknowns. They might not even know what they're asking for. And so to put them into the practice of linking them this to specific requirements for the product team or their product or their delivery plan, that really helps to solidify the, the value of your work, their work, and then the outcomes. So when somebody says, last thing, when somebody says, we want self-service, I would suggest challenge them, right? Ask them why. Maybe ask them why about that and why about that. Two or three whys is usually good enough. <laughs> um, you got to define with them what they mean by self-service and what you mean by self-service. What is self-service? And by the way, what it is not, right? It's not a magic box. It's not supposed to be, I don't know and I don't care anymore. It, 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 it should be the opposite is I care so much that I wanna do it a little bit of it myself, but not necessarily get caught in all the, the nerdy bits underneath. Um, when, when they say we want self-service, you need to de-risk that whole proposition. You need to figure out 
what are the what are the things they're assuming? What are the expectations? That's that would be a de-risk activity and demyth, right? M mystify, demystify anything that typically is sort of oh we want this so that it it'll magically solve our problem. Uh uh, right? Like let's let's be clear. But with all this stuff, one of the number one things they have to do when somebody asks you for something, you always need to receive it kindly and follow up. You might not actually do it, right? In the process of figuring out, should this thing be done? And what do you mean by this? You might find that that's okay. It's okay if, uh, if this doesn't have to be done or have to be done now, right? But you need to do that kindly, politely, respectfully, and then also follow up with them. Because even if it's a no now, right? Like it's, it's a no for right now or whatever. The fact is, if you don't do that kindly, it's gonna feel bad to them. Right? And then they're not going to come back. They're not going to want it. They're not going to want to encourage that practice and that process in place. And without following up, if they ask you for something, even if the answer is no, you don't follow up, it's going to go into a black hole. Maybe they're going to bug you again. Maybe they're not going to bug you again. Yikes. They're going to disappear off your radar. So with those things in mind, self-service is not the goal, but it certainly is a very important part of the way that we're moving to a more continuous model today. So whatever, like, subscribe, I don't care, but like definitely put your uh, thoughts, your, your questions in the comments, wherever that is. Um, and I will definitely be interested in the kind of conversations that we have uh, about this topic. Thank you, ciao.